Okay, so now we're going to graduate to multi-step equations. So get ready to do more than one thing. Okay. Can you think of the number such that you multiply by 11? Take away 6 from that and you would get 27. Not, not off the top. Not off the top. You can move the 6 right. to the other side. So the temptation is to go into the solving. That's why it's such a, it's such a beautiful thing because it's a tool to solve. It's a tool to solve. And that's, I wouldn't expect you or anyone really learning this stuff to solve this using their head. So yeah, a lot yeah. of people could though, even like young, young uh, learners. But, they de they but Ruby, you can't even solve that. It's 21 over 11, isn't it? What do we do to both sides? We add six. Huh? Oh, we add six, excuse me. Yeah, does thought, it help yeah. to see it? Okay, now. Yeah, good. 33. 33, there you go. So we have... X is three. Yeah. yeah, X is three, 11. Now you can solve it just looking at it, right? right? So this is the thing. I would encourage this to teachers as well. It's like sometimes teachers are <clears throat> well-intended and they insist on showing the work. Like you must show me that you go like this on both sides, okay? I would just wonder whether we're, um, whether we're, that's uh, too much of an ask because if we want our kids to use our brains, use their brains, um, I'll just let them solve, you know, 11 times what's 33? 11 times what's 33? Three. Three, right. Which is the result of dividing by 11 on both sides. Okay. Right. There is a number, plus six, out there in the space. Divided by four, which results in five. Can you think of it? Yeah. Is a uh, 14. 14 plus six is 20. X equal 14, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 that's right. So you're saying it's 14, well done. So it's fun, like, earlier no, later yes. Right. You know, it's kind of cool. Like, there's a lot of, the brain can work in personal ways, and it can lead you to where you want to go, or you can use a tool. It's, it's wide open. What if you didn't know that X was 14? What would you do to both sides first? Multiply by four. Multiply by four, hit. On both sides, boom, boom. So four divided by four is one. What's left? X plus six equal 20. Is X isolated on both sides? Oh. No, like six is like gonna go into this, the kitchen. This takes minus six, yeah. Minus six on both sides, gone. X equals, like you said, 14, bravo. Can X be anything else besides 14 in this no. case? No, right, so there's one answer to this problem. Three-fourths of something plus one is 16. 10, is it? Three-fourths of 10. Three-fourths is like 75%. Is 7.5? 7.5. Is 7.5 plus one 16? No. Are you okay being wrong sometimes? Sure. Totally. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Because yeah. I take my time and go to... Subtract from one, so that's 15. Uh, thank you for trying to do yeah. it, and you got the wrong way, but it's actually the road to the right way, you know? If you eventually figure it out, it never really was a mistake. Okay, let's do. I'm going to show you a common mistake that people make. They go like this. It'd be a fun experiment for you to tell me, see why they would do that. Why is this wrong? No, because that Why? one is independent of that equation. And what would we need to do with four over three if we multiplied it on this side? You have to make just put everybody go to kitchen and leave the <laughs> X on this side. Well, X is X is still hanging out with all the friends. But if you, you move that friend out. We will. We do need to. Yeah. The problem with multiplying first is that the four over three is applying is applied to the entire side. Right. And a lot of students when they're first learning this, don't see that that four over three applies. So you're right, we should move, like just sort of like move things off the scale, if you will. Right. So here we go. That's right. We're going to take off that one by subtracting it on both sides. Then, then we can multiply by recip. Okay. So what's the result of subtracting one on both sides? 15. 15 over here. So 3 over 4x equals 15. Do what to both sides? Now in the second step. So, so it's, yeah, 4 times, yeah. 
Multiply by four over three. three. Good Oops. hit. Four over three. Cancellation coming. Three becomes one. This becomes sixty. I mean, this become you multiplying by four, right? Before. That's not wrong to Maybe. multiply first. Can we cancel to simplify our lives? Sure. What's the uh, three and fifteen? Three into fifteen. How many Five. times? Five. Five. So that's a common factor. Three goes into itself once. Three goes into fifteen five times. Now multiplying, we get. 20. 20, right. 5 times 4 across over 1. Good job. You got gas in the tank? You good? Sure, yeah. You got yeah, energy? Yeah, absolutely, okay. right, yeah. Cool. Um, this is fun. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but I can't help it. <laughs> um, 4 minus half of something is 10. What do you got? 6 is equal... Uh, Four minus half of something is positive ten. Weird. Right. So we let's do it. solve it. We do minus. Let's solve. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I want the answer. <laughs> oh yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were trying to mess around with it in your head. It just says a fun challenge there. So right, just like before, we're not going to multiply by this reciprocal yet. Right. To counteract the times, we're going to subtract, move stuff to the other side. Get x by itself. So, it's 12. so this becomes, oh, you're already there. Negative 1 half x equals 10 minus 4 is 6. Multiply both sides by what number? 2 over 1, or by 2. Yeah, by 2? Just 2? Yeah. Would you like to cancel the negative as well? You could do times negative 2. That would, yeah. be, that would be one way to condense, right. or we would come back and do that. Right. You know, but okay. since we can. We're going to do it times negative 2 on both sides. And so you're right. Yeah, this all cancels. Positive there. These go. So x equals, it turned out it was a negative number all along. All right. Cool. Okay, so now we're going to talk about consecutive. What does consecutive mean? One after the other. One after another, right. So let's say just consecutive numbers, one after the other. If n was one of them, what would the next one be? n plus 1. That's right, n plus 1. So these numbers are one after the other. If you wanted to mess around, if this was like 5, inevitably this would have to be 6. Right. No matter what this was. And if this was 15, this would have to be 16 because it's 15 plus 1. So that's why it works every time. No flaws in the game, as they say. No flaws in the game. What's the next one? n plus 2. Good. So what if I asked you... For three consecutive integers that add up to 30. Three consecutive integers whose sum, that sum to 30. Now you could possibly do this in your mind if you wanted to try mess around with three, it. 3n plus 3. Uh, I'm, I'm not asking, to, I'm challenging you to not go to algebra right away. What do you think? Can you think of three numbers in a row that when you add them, it's 30? Like 1 plus 2 plus 3? Is that 30? No. No, it's too small. So but it has to be consecutive. Yes. yes, yes. So we could say 9, 10, 11. 9, 10, 11. This is the kind of thing I'm encouraging people to do in addition to algebra. Uh -huh. Because... Algebra is basically like, let's solve some stuff. But if you could solve some stuff, then great. Algebra is sort of hanging back neutrally, saying like, all right, I'm here if you need me. Yeah. But yeah, these three numbers add up to 30. You know, you could even think like 10, 10, 10. Right, there's the logic. Yeah. You say 10 times 3 is 30, so let's take one off. Add one off. Yeah, one off here and add it to there. Right. right. You could even think of it like visually. This was 10, 10, 10. Boom, boom. These are all 10, and then I take one off and make it 9, and I add it here and make it 11, and it's still 30. Right, that's kind of a fun way. Now let's do algebra. N plus. N plus 1. N plus 1 plus. N plus 2. N plus 2. Three numbers in a row, consecutive, that add to 30. What is N plus N plus N? 3N. What is 1 plus 2? Plus 3. Equals 30. Do what to both sides first? Minus 3. Minus 3, hit. So we get 3n equals 30. Minus 3 is 27. 
Divide by three. Divide by three, n equals? Nine. Nine, divide by three, n equals nine. Lo and behold, there's that first answer. A lot of people um, need to learn that or the problem's not done because they say three consecutive numbers that sum to 30, what are they? I should have asked it. What are they? What are the three numbers? Nine, right? 10 and 11. Nine plus one, nine plus two. So those are the three numbers. And the saga continues. We could also check it, you know? Math is so beautiful in the sense that like when you type a history paper and you turn it in, you hope you got it right. Like you hope, I hope the teacher gets what I'm saying. I hope that I understood the assignment. I hope, I hope, I hope. I hope I hit all the points on the, on the rubric, like on the assignment. But with math, you know, do these three numbers add to 30? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's very like, objective. Right? Yeah, it's, yeah, there's like a beauty to that. Right. I kind of like the um, I, I like the history paper thing too as well because you have to make your argument. That's cool. So I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying it's good to have both. You know. Right. It's it's a good thing to have. It's like a relief. You know, a lot of people that dread math, but you can just say like, wouldn't it be cool to take a test and know you got the problems right? That'd be so cool. So if you know that you got that right, let's talk about consecutive odd numbers. Okay. Suppose n was odd, okay? What would be the next odd number? One or three, yeah. So give me an odd number. One, three. Oh, you want to do like five. one, three, five? Give me a, give me a, a number that's not odd, that, uh, that's not one, like something bigger, just for fun. Three. Four. Start with three, cool. So what's the next odd one? Five. Five, and what's the next odd one? Seven. Okay, so hypothetically, three, five, seven. If n was three, the next odd number would be what? Plus five, you know, eight. N plus what would be the five? Oh. If N was three. Fifth, equal what? So let's assume N is three. Right. So it's nine, this is 15. Um, no, I want this next number to be five. What would I have to add to N to get to five? If N is three. <coughs> Two. Yeah. <coughs> what would I have to add to n to get the second odd number? Two, right? Um, oh, two plus no. four, is it? Yeah. Four, yeah. Now, these three numbers, no matter what n is, will be consecutive odd or consecutive even. Wow, yeah. Right? Yeah. It works every time, like... Just you, because you're consecu consecutive. Consecutive right. odd, right. or consecutive even. Even, right. Yeah, like so. if... Give me a number for n, any number. That's odd. Just uh, three, four... We no, did. Say five. Bigger. Get out of the tens. Oh, 11. Good. <coughs> if n was 11, the next consecutive odd would be two more than this, 13. The next consecutive odd would be how much more than this? 15. Yeah, how much more? Four. Four. And then it also works with uh, even numbers. So this is the progression for even and odd. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, is that cool? Even and odd, consecutive. Okay, so the question would be three consecutive, what do you got? Three consecutive, I wrote a note to myself, even. Three consecutive, even. Numbers that sum to negative 42. So we don't have to get try. You can try. Can you? Th there. Do you think they'll be negative? We start with the negative number, right? Mm -hmm. And then another even one that's in a row, and another even one. Or we can just jump straight to algebra, you know, we don't have to get bogged down. Right. So, what's the first even number in our case? In this 11? No. No. Do we know it? Do you know the answer no. to this? Me, me neither. So, no. it's what? N. N. Plus the sum, right? The sum. What's the next even integer? N plus 2. What's the next even integer in terms of N? N plus 4. Correct. And what do these all sum to? 
Minus 42. Minus 42. Jackie Robinson. Okay. N plus N plus N makes? 3N. 3N. 2 plus 4 makes? 6. Equals negative 42. To break down something that we're completely in the dark of before, now it's just coming out. Right. Do what to both sides? Minus 6. Minus 6. Minus 6. Minus 6 today. Gone. 3N equals... What's this? Negative 42, take away 6. Negative 48. Correct. Divide by 3. How many times does 3 go into 48? It's okay if you don't know. Is 18? No. 16. 16. 16, okay. yeah. Yeah, it's cool. You're doing well. You're like remembering your math from back in the... Did you use this stuff as an engineer? Rarely. Rarely. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's awesome. That's interesting, huh? Yeah. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> All right. Let's try it. If 7x minus 3 is 52, what is 10x minus 2? Sometimes this is intimidating. What do you think we should do first? We should one, come, and, minus, come and stand next to me. Minus 3 on both sides. So solve for x right. is what you get. For solve for x and then do what with it? Then divide by 7. Right, that's still solving for x. Why? Why solve for x? Because uh, if you know what x is, then we can solve the other one. Right, so if we get the x, we can apply it in here and get this result, exactly. So just having that vision at least gives us some purpose. Minus 3 both sides, like you said, before we divide. 7x equals? 49. 49. How many times? 7. 7, seven. good. And then you're right, so this 7 is for the x. So now instead of 10 times x minus 2, it's 10 times 7 minus 2. And this becomes? 68. Right, 70 minus 2 is 68. Well done. Okay. <clears throat> One more round, man.